The major genotic diseases are the virus, bacteria, the parasites, the protozoa, rickettsia, chlamydia, fungi, and the prion. These are all the agents. So in each one of these categories, we have a multitude of infectious agents that are important. Okay. What socioeconomic impact these genotic agents are going to pose? Some indicative list uh, that has been given here. The, the, if an individual gets exposed to a genotic agent, the risk of exposure, okay, that depends upon the social custom of an individual. If an individual is exposed, got infected, and is poor, then the disease is going to take a devastating turn. If the individual who got infected is well to do, can get the diagnosis and therapeutic approach uh, interventions in time, the disease fades away. So, social status of an individual, habits and hobbies. Okay, if an individual is a well caring type of a person, the disease can be managed. Just take, for example, one non infectious disease, diabetes mellitus. There are people who are dying of diabetes, and there are people who are living since several decades with diabetes because they are the better managers of the diabetes. Okay, just like, just like that, the, uh, the infections, the genotic infections, based on their habits and hobbies, some individuals can take care of, some individuals do not take care of. That decides the fate of the progression of, the progression of that particular genotic infection in those individuals. China, for example, a large number of genotic diseases are emerging from China. There, one of the reason, possible reason is that the diverse food habits, the delicacy of the wild animals, okay, wild creatures that they eat and the traditional Chinese system of medicine, okay, wherein certain uh, wild uh, creatures are said to heal in the, uh, uh, the, the diseases. Okay, so because of that, there is increased interface between the wild animal species and the man. Because of that, there is increased occurrence of genotic diseases in the, in the China. Occupation. Just to give an example, leptospirosis is very common in the sewers, those people who work in the sewages, because increased exposure. For example, rabies is very much rampant in those people who are there on the streets because there is increased chances of biting by the infected animal or rabid animal. Economic status, economic status I explained. Anthropological characteristics of a society. Certain human race, they are more susceptible to certain infections compared to the other. One thing. Second thing, the customs, the social, the religious aspects, all those things, they do have their own impact on the occurrence of genotic infections, okay? That is why if you see the world map with, with uh, uh, genotic infections, it is not uniform. It is scattered around certain area, especially Southeast Asian region is very important area, red area, wherein we have the higher incidence of genotic infections. In other words, to say those, these uh, a region, this region of the world, they carry is the higher burden of genotic infections compared to the temperate or the polar region. Okay, polar region lacks biodiversity. The biodiversity is more near equator. Obviously, the countries, tropical type of countries that occur in the equator, they are probably the one that carry the higher load of uh, the uh, genotic diseases. Okay. You see this uh, particular uh, image. To the right side of the screen, you see the resilience, and you see the left side of the screen, the vulnerability. And you see how genotic infections are affected. You know that animals in the center, animals are kept, they are used, and they are eaten. This is what is the use of the animal, okay? You keep a draft animal, you keep a companion pet animal, okay? Animals are used, okay? You ride on them, so you take the pasmina, you take the fiber, you take the wool, they're used. 
animals are eaten okay the the sheep goat rabbit poultry they are eaten okay this is all this are this is all the uses whenever you, such a use of the animal such a application of the animal occurs there is increased resilience of the human being the animals are used for for mitigating the malnutrition in the human because that they are the protein and other nutrient sources increase the human resilience if they are not there it increases the vulnerability okay if the egg is not provided if the milk is not provided if the meat is not provided such individuals will become vulnerable to the diseases or towards death that is what is vulnerability but the animals they perform the function of increasing resilience so animals are kept whenever these animals are kept for the benefits mentioned here the animal through these animals the zoonotic infections are also transferred whenever these zoonotic infections are transferred to the human being from the animals okay the resilience gets decreased depending on the type of the zoonotic infection but the vulnerability increases the resilience opposite is the the poverty the the death the suffering this is what is vulnerability we call it as okay so zoonotic diseases those countries that are having large number of zoonotic diseases uh, there is a higher vulnerability to these infections in the in other words there is a vicious cycle okay poverty zoonosis low income zoonosis um more of a customs and religious type of things higher vulnerability i am going to discuss whenever i discuss a particular disease but at this point of time we just have a general overview so they all are they 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 are they are either mutually they are complementary okay the poverty the poor hygiene the poor hygiene the increased uh, uh, infections including zoonosis higher zoonosis again that reduces the, uh, their poverty it means increases their poverty they they it push them to become more and more poor because there is spending on these zoonotic infections okay work they cannot work again they will become poorer and poorer when they get affected so it is a vicious cycle if you see the top uh, obstacles for the global trade in different countries if you see them they are all if you see the especially the foods of animal origin they are the zoonotic diseases are obstacles to the global trade we do have list a and list b oi diseases they are important to a country or uh, for the global trade the impact of zoonosis and uh, zoonosis on the human well being and the economy if you talk about enormous damage they do one thing is that i talked about a vicious cycle the countries having higher burden of the zoonotic infections they become poorer and poorer because they have to spend on vaccines they have to spend on deworming they have to spend on hygiene sanitation and when when a, when an individual uh, uh, acquires the skills and all and when they succumb to a genetic disease again that's going to uh, create a a type of uh, uh, vacuum there so that's also one more problem say for example you have created one best sportsman one boy best sportsman after creating after spending so many crores of rupees when that individual is ready to participate in the olympics from a country if that individual dies of zoonotic infection so that spending is lost resilience is lost vulnerability is increased just to give an example so likewise there are many factors we are going to discuss these factors in detail in another class there are many factors that impede the growth of any nation one such factor is the genetic infections now what is the quantum okay no country wish that it should have a genetic infection but they do occur time to time and whenever they occur in the form of an outbreak the outbreak could be pandemic also then it there is a huge loss to a country or to a global economy sars this not this sars earlier sars 50 billion plus dollars were lost 
food and more disease in UK, 30 billion. Okay. In India, plague, 200 crores. Okay. You see here, 2 billion. They were lost in India due to 1994 plague outbreak in Surat. Okay. Many people got infected. Around uh, 0.5 million, 5 lakh people, they got uh, displaced. Okay, and India incurred a loss due to loss of the tourism and other things because nobody would like to. If there is a plague in India, who will come to India to see Western Ghats? Okay, you have said that we do have this animal, that animal, you have created this villa, resort, everything. When there is a plague, who will come? That's what happened in uh, uh, that Surat 1994. WHO estimated the loss to the tune of 2 billion. Recently in Malaysia, recently in the sense, decades back, 99, Nipah virus in Malaysia, huge loss. Avian flu in Hong Kong, huge loss. Okay, the trade get, uh, get infected, uh, affected, the tourism gets affected, countries incur the losses. And one is loss due to the loss of the trade and tourism. The other is loss with respect to spending on the curtailing of the disease in that area. So these are all the double losses any country has, especially in the Southeast Asian region because of the, if you see the Southeast Asian region shown here, there is a huge economic loss each year due to genotic diseases because this region is a breeder of the genosis because of the huge human population and huge animal population good opportunities for the transmission of the genotic infections. That is why uh, this region is suffering a lot due to the genotic infections. Economic impact of the genotic disease. Uh, this I already explained, but just to sum up, there is a loss due to the spending by the individual or the family with respect to diagnosis and treatment of the infection. Today, I got a tuberculosis of bovine origin. Number one, the spending by, uh, due to the diagnosis, spending due to the treatment, okay? Even though it is covered by uh, the TB control uh, uh, mission in India, but I do, I also require to spend certain amount on that. If it is not covered, say for example, Coxiella, the diagnosis, the treatment, the laboratory services that if I am a working man and I am a source of uh, income to the family, if I myself get suffered due to one of these genotic diseases, tuberculosis, brucellosis, leptospirosis, Q fever, I cannot go to work. When I cannot go to work, I cannot earn. When I cannot earn, my family suffers. It affects. When several such people, they suffer and they won't turn to the work, there is a national loss. Okay, the socioeconomic loss is due to the individual loss, due to the family loss, due to the uh, societal loss, and due to a loss to a state or a country. Okay, that's what is the scale of economic loss that is incurred due to these zoonotic infections. What impact uh, uh, these zoonotic infections uh, have? Okay. One is loss of work capacity. If you suffer from, if a farmer suffers from brucellosis, there is very severe joint pain. That individual cannot work efficiently. There is law, work capacity is lost. Either there is disease or disability. If it is a disability, the, sometimes the disability is a lifelong, lifelong phenomenon. Then the individual can never come to work again. Loss of earning. This person has not gone to work. There is no earning. Clinical complications. We talk about Ritter syndrome, Glenn Barr syndrome, the, the uh, post episode, the infection is over, but sequel that occurs after some time, nervous disorders, long crepitating type of infections. So they are all going to affect uh, the, the, the outcome of the uh, resilient life of an individual. We call them as clinical complications. You, you are having some immunosuppression due to some reticuloendothelial infection. And a commensal organism has taken upper hand. Or you have been treated for some certain genotic infections with a certain uh, therapeutic agent, but the super infection has spread in. 
Okay, what are these super infection? All those things we'll study a little later. So there is interference in the family life. You are having a brucellosis. You are having uh, other uh, sexually transmitted diseases. The family life cannot be proper. Malnourishment due to the increased metabolic demand. These individuals will have reduced absorption. Say, for example, certain parasitic zoonosis. The active absorptive surface is transformed into a cording type of uh, fibrous tissue that can no more uh, or uh, may not be zero, but there is reduced absorption of the nutrients from that part. So there is malnourishment. Nutrients are there in the food, but they are not absorbed in the gut because there is damage to the absorptive surface. That such individuals, even though they are fed with a, uh, uh, what you can say, prescribed diet, they will not put on the weight. There is malnourishment. Immunosuppressive conditions such as HIV and AIDS. Okay, say for example, the the popul population is uh, that uh, if you see the demographics, the number of HIV infected individuals who are transformed into AIDS patients has increased, and this has increased the opportunities for genetic infections to increase. Just to give an example, today we are talking about the black fungus, mycormycosis. Mycormycosis is there very much in the environment. It is there where I am talking right now. It is there where you are sitting. It is there over your cell phone. It is there in the air. It is there in the uh, your cupboard. It is there in the uh, everywhere. It is there. But then why you are not suffering from black fungus? Because you are immunocompetent. Even if some spores you inhale, even if some hyphae that enters your nose. You are capable of eliminating that. When an individual for corona treatment, when they are put under steroid therapy, there is immunosuppression. And whenever there is immunosuppression, these super infections that occur, uh, they are simultaneously on the antibiotic therapy also. Okay, so this is how. Likewise, when it comes to HIV AIDS, the individual is, individuals are uh, immunosuppressed. Since they are immunosuppressed, any genotic infections, if that individual would have been immunocompetent, genotic infection would have failed. But since he's a, he or she is immunosuppressed, so the, there is increased opportunity for the agent to flare up. Okay. So remaining things we'll uh, discuss in the subsequent classes, just to wind up because it is time now. They affect the food supply. Egg supply, milk supply, meat supply, they, are, they all get affected. They affect the animal health. Okay, animals, they do suffer. Ultimately, that increases the, the, the burden uh, in any country. Okay, so we, they, we need to undertake the surveillance and they affect the, what we call it as the food supply. And at a global level, we do have a certain system to address these genotic infections. Okay, so that's how they, that's what is the uh, the area of genosis that uh, that we are going to study in this particular uh, uh, unit uh, over a period of uh, another month or so. Okay, I do not know exactly uh, how long, but we are comfortable in completing the uh, syllabus. Okay, any doubt? Quick one or two doubts. Quick. No doubts. Okay, then uh, uh, CR, please note down the attendance.